The intuition is this immediate knowledge that we have of things. It appears spontaneously in us without us having to reflect to obtain it. All of a sudden we know something that a second before we did not know. With an intuition we have immediately the solution to a problem, a clear view of the complex situation or a good idea of the value of someone. The speed with which the intuition comes excludes that it is the result of reflections. It appears suddenly in us and this suddenness is striking. It is something which is said in the, when people talk about their intuition. They will say it came as a lightning or it was like a flash or in a fraction of a second I had the solution to the problem. Another characteristic of the intuition is the feeling of obviousness they give in the person who receives them. For the person, the intuition is perfectly true and correct. He is so convinced it is true that he is ready to take decisions and to do things which, for the people who have not received the intuition, seem to be unwise, very risky or even foolish. Someone has a good professional situation, but he receives an intuition that he has to change and do something else. He is so convinced that it is correct that he goes forwards in his project. His surrounding is horrified of this decision, but even so, he is convinced he goes forwards with his project and the future will show that it was a very good decision. Beside the intuitions, we have another faculty, which is rational thinking, or what is also called the intellect. This is the way we function all throughout the day. With rational thinking, the knowledge is not immediate, it takes time to come. Because it's the result of a whole process, we have to gather information, classify these information, then analyze them, make deductions, inductions, in order to have a, discover a new piece of knowledge. So it takes time. And it's a result of work, thinking, and therefore it is not spontaneous as the intuitions are. As the intellectual knowledge is the result of reasoning, there are good reason, there are proofs that the knowledge is correct. But this intellectual knowledge doesn't give this feeling of obviousness which is given with the intuitions. Of course, if it is only a specific uh, fact, the person can be convinced. But as soon as there's a whole lot of facts which have to be interpreted, explained, or on which we have to take a decision, then the feeling of obviousness is not there anymore. Sometimes in politics we have to vote for or against a project. Someone listens to the arguments to vote yes, and he thinks, yes, this argument is good, this one too, I am going to vote yes, I'm convinced. But is he so sure? Is he really convinced? Well, as soon as he starts listening to the arguments against to vote no, no, he will say, well, this argument is quite good also, this one too, and he is not sure anymore what he wants to vote. With the intuition and the rational thinking, we are in a paradoxical situation. Someone thinks thoroughly. He has all sorts of reflection to lead to a conclusion. They are proof that it should be true, but he is not convinced. Someone does not reflect. He receives an intuition, and although he doesn't have any proof, he is convinced that the intuition is true, is correct. How is it possible to be so unsure when things should be sure, 
with the intellect? And how can we be so sure when thing, things seem not so sure with the intuition? To answer this question, we have to talk about the origin of the intuitions. There are two ways of seeing things, the materialist approach and the spiritual approach. A materialist is someone who thinks that only matter exists and to be able to believe in the existence of something we have to be able to perceive it or to see it. Science today is a materialist science and many, many people have adopted this way of thinking. For them there is only matter, therefore a human being is only a physical body directed by a brain. And therefore the origin of the intuitions must be somewhere in the brain. Well, science has searched all over the brain to find the center of the intuition, but it has found no part which, could, uh, which is the center of the intuitions, the starting point of the intuitions. So now let's see what the spiritual approach has to say. And to do this, I will base myself on the spiritual approach of a book entitled In the Light of Truth, The Great Message by Abdrushin. The spiritual approach considers that matter exists, but there are also other things which are not material and which nevertheless exist. Among those things is the immaterial spirit of man, that is the spirit taken in the sense of soul. This spirit stems from the spiritual plane which is at the top of creation. When the spirit wants to be active here on earth, it has to put on a cloak, an envelope, which enables it to perceive what is happening in the plane of gross matter, but also helps it to be active in that plane. And this cloak is the physical body which its mother is preparing for it during pregnancy. The spirit incarnates in this physical body and uses it as a tool all through its sojourn here on earth. Now, this tool, the physical body, has different instruments which the spirit can use, the legs to move about, the hands to work, and up in the head something similar to a very powerful computer, the brain. So the brain is a tool at the disposal of the spirits. Now, let's say it straight away. According to the Grail message, the origin of the intuition is the spirit. And the origin of the intellect is the brain. The spirit in itself, before it incarnates in a physical body, is able to evaluate a situation or consider a problem. And when it is doing that, it is using its intuitive faculties, that is, the intuition. The intuition manifests in specific forms. It manifests in the form of a picture which speaks or has meaning to the person who received the picture or in the form of an intuitive feeling. It's an intuitive feeling. It's different from a feeling, I feel cold or warm and so forth. Now, when the spirit incarnates in a body, body it doesn't work alone anymore, but with the brain. And the result of this cooperation with the brain is something denser, heavier than intuition. It is the thoughts and the words which serve to define the thoughts. So we have the intuition with images, pictures and an intuitive feeling. And we have the intellect with thoughts and words. Now, some people might say, how can we be clear with an intuition if there are no words? We need words to have a clear idea of things. 
Well, it is not so, and we have all experienced it. We have been all in the situation where we wanted to explain something to someone, but we were lacking one word. And we searched for the word, and we thought, we said, just a second, it's on the tip of my tongue. In this kind of situation, we are perfectly clear on what we want to say, but without words. So it's possible to have intuitions and to be very clear uh, what we think, what we want to say. Now, another thing I would like to add is that the intellect stems from the brain. The brain is of gross matter. And the brain, therefore, is in affinity with everything which is of gross matter. That is the natural surrounding. Therefore, the intellect, the field of action of the intellect, is gross matter. Knowledge of gross matter, that is, all the different kinds of sciences, chemistry, physics, biology, and so forth. But it, its field is also the way to use this knowledge, that is, technology. So science and technology are the field of action of the intellect and not of the spirit. Now that we know that the intuition stem from the spirit, we can understand why the immediateness of the intuitions. The spirit stems from the spiritual plane which is at the top of creation. It is a plane which is much lighter, ethereal than gross matter. The phenomenon which take place take place at a higher speed than in gross matter. Now, the spirit stems from the spiritual plane, so it works with the same speed. It can work at a speed which is much quicker, faster than the speed, the rhythm of work of the brain, which is of gross matter. Gross, that means heavy, dense. It goes more slowly. Does the spirit really function at a higher speed than the brain? Well, yes, and to show you that, I will speak to you about dreams. There are two kinds of dreams. One kind of dream is uh, dreams which are very confused, uh, tiring. There are words which are pronounced, which shows that they are in relation with the intellect. In fact, it's the brain which is digesting all the information it received uh, during the day. But there's another kind of dream which takes place in the REM phases of sleep. These dreams take place four or five times in the night and last only for one or two minutes. And in these dreams, we can dream of many, many events which on us in real life would take many years to go through, through but we go through them just in one or two minutes. And if this is possible, it's because those dreams are experiences made by the spirit and the spirit functions at a higher speed than the brain. In relation with this, I would like to quote a passage of the Bible which says, in a thousand years is as a day. Which means that in the spiritual plane, in one day, we can experience as many things as we experience in a thousand years here on earth. The way I have spoken of the intuitions up to now might give the impression that there is only one kind of intuition. But there are different kinds. And I'm going to present you these different kinds and each time explain how it is possible for the spirit to know what he transmits through the intuition. The first kind of intuition is the intuitive flash. The intuition appears to us like a flash. Suddenly we have the answer to our question or the solution to a problem. For example, a group of colleagues are in a meeting to find the solution to a problem. They talk about it, they analyze it, but they cannot find the solution. They've been at it for a long time, they're getting tired and stressed. Now, 
another colleague appears on the premises and says, oh, what are you doing here? And they explain, we have this problem and we're looking for the solution, and, but we cannot find it. And the person who just arrived says, ah, you should do this and that. And all the participants to this meeting say, but of course, that's obvious. Why didn't we find it ourselves? Well, this person had an intuitive flash which enabled him to find straight away the solution to the problem. So how is this possible? The spirit has its origin in the spiritual plane. It has a broad view of things. It does not only consider the problem and the close environment, but a large environment, and it can see relations between things, and therefore find the solution very quickly. But this broad view of things is not only active for things, it can also be active on people. And this leads me to talk to you about another kind of intuition, the first impression. The first impression is an intuition that we receive very soon after we have met someone that we don't know at all, and which gives us a feeling of what kind of person is in front of us. It can either awake uh, full of trust in us and the desire to know more the person because he seems a very good person, or we can be full of distrust and repelled by the person. For example, the director of a firm is interviewing different candidates uh, for a post. He's talking with the last candidate and very soon after he begins to talk with this last candidate, he has a feeling, a first impression, that this is the person he has to engage. And although this candidate has not as good certificates as the others and not so much uh, experience, and the future will show that it, uh, it is the correct person to engage. He's very good in his posts. How is this possible? It's not the result of the reflection of the brain, because the brain would take a long time to find out what is the value of the person. It has to look at the person, how he behaves, what he says, how he says it, and so forth. It takes time. But the first impression is direct. In fact, what happens is that two spirits are facing each other. And a spirit can feel intuitively another uh, spirit without being distracted by the outside appearances. He can feel directly what kind of spirit it is and uh, evaluates uh, its value. Another kind of intuition are the premonitions. A premonition is an intuition which informs us of a coming event. This event has not taken place. Uh, there are no signs that we can interpret or that the intellect can interpret that something is going to happen. Nothing has happened, but the person is informed that something, an event is going to take place. And it's an intuition, it comes suddenly without reflection, and the person is totally convinced it will happen. For example, someone enters the train and suddenly has a premonition that there will be an accident. So the person goes out of the train and the train leaves without him. A few hours later, he hears that the train had had an accident and different people were injured. We can only be happy that the person escaped the danger, but nevertheless, there's a question which arises, how come this person was informed, but not the others? Or were the others also informed, but didn't follow the premonition? Well, to have a clear idea on the subject, different studies have been carried out, and the aim of these studies was to uh, discover how many passengers were on the train when the accident take place, took place and how many passengers were on the same train, same line at the same time 
the 28 days which preceded the accident. And this kind of study was carried out on different lines where there had been accidents. And the result of these studies is that the day of the accident, the number of passengers is always much lower than the other days. In one case, for example, the day of the accident, there were nine passengers, but all the other days, in average, there were 62. So we see that many other people also receive, uh, received the premonition. Did they receive it very consciously or not so consciously? Whatever, they decided, took a decision to not take the train or to take a later train. How is this possible? It is possible because all the events have an ethereal form in the beyond before they take place here on Earth. And this ethereal uh, form is what the spirit can perceive and which informs it of the coming event. It is in relation with the thought forms. Another kind of intuition is what is called the inner voice. We pay, take many decisions in our life, but sometimes after one decision, we have an intuitive feeling or we hear a voice which tells us, don't do that, it's bad, it's stealing, it's uh, lying, and so forth. As it's telling us what is good and bad, this voice, this inner voice, is also called the voice of our conscience. Well, how can the spirit know? Well, the spirits, no, the high values, what is good, what is bad, what is fair, unfair, are values which exist in the spiritual sphere. Now, the spirit stems from the spiritual plane, and therefore it knows those values and can function according to these values and transmits it through the intuitions. The last kind of intuition I want to talk about is inspiration. One usually talks about inspiration in relation with artists. When the painter is painting a picture or a composer composing a piece of music or a poet writing a poem, they put everything in their work, all their ideas, feelings. But sometimes something comes in extra, something additional comes, and this is a better insight of the subject, other ideas or feelings, which enable these artists to do a work which is much better than what they usually do. A piece of music which is so wonderful that it will be listened to for many years or centuries. The quantity, the quality and the speed with which the, in, the inspiration comes exclude that it can be the result of the work of the intellect. And to show how fast and uh, quantitatively many things can come, I would like to talk to you about Franz Schubert, um, an Austrian composer. In the year 1815, he was 18 years old, he composed 162 Lieder. That is about one every two or three days, which is really incredible. And during the months of August of that year, he wrote 29 Lieder, which is one a day, practically. And according to the experts, many of these leaders are among the best he ever wrote. But what is also interesting is that they were all, nearly all written in one go without any corrections, or very few corrections, which shows that it cannot be the intellect, because the intellect could not produce so many songs in such a close, a, a small time, and he would make a petition and then cross out something, add something here, it would be full of corrections. So human beings, we human beings, we have a wonderful faculty to 
help us in our life, which is the intuition. But as we can observe, this intuition does not manifest very often. We are not very intuitive. And why is that? Why are we not more intuitive? Well, to answer this question, I will base myself again on the book, the knowledge of the book, The Grail Message. In this book, it says that there is, between the spirit and the brain, there is a hierarchy. The spirit, which is the true ego of man, which stems from the spiritual plane, occupies the first position, the dominant position. Now, the brain, which is only a tool which comes from the plane of gross matter, occupies the second position, the subaltern position. So, this is the hierarchy as it should be. At the top, the spirit, with a broad view of things, decides and gives the directions. Now, the intellect, in the subordinate position, receives the directions and carries out these directions in gross matter. You remember I said that the field of action of the intellect is technology. Technology is carrying out things in gross matter. Now this is the hierarchy as it should be, but the great message explained that nowadays, and already for many centuries, the hierarchy has been reversed. Now the intellect is at the top of the hierarchy, and the intuition is underneath, it's stifled underneath. And this is not a good situation to be in, because the element which has a narrow view of thing, the intellect, is at the top, directs, decides. So how did this inversion of the hierarchy take place? At the beginning of the development of man on earth, the hierarchy was respected, and this showed because man stopped to act as an animal, he started to make different tools and objects, he built himself houses which were better and better, and he did agriculture, breeding of animals, and so forth. But at a certain point, he was so happy with all he had carried out in matter, that he decided to leave on one side the intuition and to concentrate on the work of the intellect to do more and better things in matter. And so he used his intellect daily, all the time, and it developed more and more because, as you know, there's a law of nature which says that the more you use an organ, the more it develops. The intellect was used very much, so it develop, develop becomes stronger and stronger. But besides that, the, inter, the intuition was not used, it did not develop, it became weaker and weaker. And at a certain moment, the intellect was so much stronger than the intuition that it took over the leads and was at the top of the hierarchy. And this brings us in a state which in the Grail message is defined as the state of the de domination of the intellect. It is, this means that human beings have a very strong tendency to follow their intellect instead of their intuition. When there's a choice between the two, which is very often, it always follows its intellect. And to give you an illustration to this, I will give you the following example. An example to show how the intellect dominates. Someone has a problem with a colleague or a neighbor and he starts uh, thinking about it to find a solution. He's emotionally involved, so he is thinking a lot, analyzing, and he cannot, after a while, he cannot stop thinking and he gets very tight. And his wish is to stop thinking. Stop totally to think. And this we can do. The spirit can say to the intellect, stop thinking. We are all capable of emptying our mind of all thoughts. But now, to show how the intellect dominates, how long will this emptiness of all thoughts last? One or two seconds for sure, three or four maybe, but 
Soon after, the intellect will manage to push a thought in the field of our conscience, and another thought, and another, and very soon will be dwelling again in our analysis of the problem. And this shows how the intellect is much stronger than the spirit. The spirit wants something, but the intellect takes over straight away. If we want another proof we can just of the domination of the intellect, we can just look at the world which surrounds us. We live in a society which is very technical. We have all sorts of machines, apparatus, devices. I mean, radio, television, internet, phones, planes, cars, and so forth. We are very, very powerful, intelligent with our intellects. The intellect is very powerful. Now, now, when we look at society and what our spirit has done in society, that is how it has organized things, did it organize things uh, so that everything is fair, is just? Do we have respect for our fellow man, to the animals, to the nature that surrounds us? Well, here we see that we are very weak spiritually. We have not organized things in a good manner. And this shows that the intellect dominates on the intuition. Now, this domination of the intellect is the reason why we are not more intuitive. But this is not a fatality, because we can become more intuitive. One piece of advice which is often given is to be more on the alert, vigilant, so that when an intuition manifests, we do not let it just go past unconsciously, but that we become conscious of it, that we grasp it and act according to it. But that's a good thing to do. But when we reflect on the process, we are making ourselves more receptive to the intuitions when they manifest. But we are not making them manifest more often. Something which is also recommended is all sorts of uh, techniques to relax and let the intuition uh, come forwards. But the problem with all those techniques is that they are techniques. Because as we have seen, techniques is the field of action of the intellect. So we will be following techniques to make our intuition uh, stronger, but the intellect will take over in it, in fact, it will be the intellect which will develop. So what we have to do is to stimulate the element which produces the intuition, that is, stimulate the spirit to awake him, stimulate to work more, so that he de it develops, that the intuitive faculties develop, and therefore that we become more intuitive. To do this, we have to fix ourselves a name which the intellect cannot grasp, so that only the spirit can work towards it. And one way of doing it is to yearn to live a life according to the high values, because the high values is something which the intellect cannot grasp, and therefore it will only be the spirit which is solicited and is active. If someone, for example, decides that everything he does, he, was, he wants to do only things which are good and never bad, he always wants to be very respectful, never irrespectful, and so forth, he's yearning for something spiritual, and it's only his spirit which can do this work, so it will be active, it will develop, and the person, with time, will become more intuitive. Another way to develop our intuition is to acquire spiritual knowledge. Because up to now, if we have a, such a powerful intellect, it's because we passed a lot of time and energy to learn intellectual knowledge at school for our profession. Now, if we do the same thing acquiring spiritual knowledge, we will develop our intuition. Spiritual knowledge is the knowledge about we as a spirit, what are we, how does it function, where does it come from? What happens to it at death when the body stops functioning? And so forth. 
Spiritual knowledge is also the knowledge about the high values and also the knowledge that outside of creation there is the creator of creation. All this is spiritual knowledge and where can we find it? Well, I've talked several times about the Grail Message. The Grail Message brings this knowledge which is necessary for human beings to understand more themselves and the life they are experiencing. Now, if someone makes the effort to read the Grail Message, because these themes interest him, and makes the effort to understand what is said, to try to evaluate if it's true or not, to see things in pictures, he will use, be using his spirits and therefore his intuitive faculties will develop and he will become more intuitive.